to be a child. You know, I don't know about you all, but there was a time about 40 years ago that I couldn't wait to grow up. I thought I knew everything. And I told my dad so. In fact, I kind of I don't remember if I actually told him out loud or I told my mom out loud, but there were times when I was 14 to about 30 that I, I thought my parents were the stupidest people in the world. And I, I don't know if, like, again, I don't know if I actually said it, but you know, I thought it. And, uh, and then at a certain time in my life, I'm like, you know, I would really like to be a child again. And every month, when I have to pay that mortgage, <laughs> and that electric bill, and the car payment, and the insurance payment, and the food payment, Amen. I would love to be a child again. And you know, there are a lot of reasons, I think, that we need to become like a child again. To become a child of God. And Matthew 18 talks a lot about what it means to become a child God, like a little child. If you remember back, what is a child like? They're totally vulnerable. They're totally dependent on their parents for everything. They're not, you could say they're helpless. I don't care if they're six months old, or 15, 16, 17, you know, the parents provide all that they need. And I think that's the attitude that God wants us to do. To, to, and now to get there, we have to give up being self-sufficient. We have to give up this idea of we're in control. That's what we want. I, mean, I, I will tell you, as an adult male, I want it my way. But Burger King stole it. But to truly become a child of God, I have to give up that and truly be like a child. Totally, wholly relying on God and my Father for. Matthew shows us what that means and how becoming a child of God, becoming like a child, is true greatness. So let's, let's look at what Matthew writes about Jesus and how we become a child of God. Let's pray first. Almighty God, I want to thank you for calling us to be childlike. For calling us to be not just childlike, but to be truly your children. Trusting you. Relying on you for everything. Lord, may you be in this building today. Using these words and your holy word to sustain us and to strengthen us and to prepare us to go into a world that is against you. So that we can be children out there showing people the way to you. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Turn to me to Matthew 18. 1 through 10. It said, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, whom he put among them, and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better if you... For you, if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea, woe to the world because, woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. 
Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the hell of fire. I don't know if you realize this, but people are people. Whether they're the uh, first century, 21st century, here are his disciples jockeying to find out who's the next in line. <laughs> who's the greatest? They're jockeying for that position because Jewish was, Jesus was considered a rabbi. And they wanted to be the star pupil. And you know, this isn't the only time. Uh, James, and, uh, James and John's mother came and said, make one of mine your right hand. And the other two are fighting to get there. And they're, they're, they're like that. They're children. They're wanting to grow up. They're wanting to know what daddy knows. They're wanting to be like that. I told my son one time that if he, if he thought he could be the, the man of the family, We'd go to the garage and whoever walked out <laughs> would, would be the, the man of the family. But with that man of the family comes the responsibility to pay all the bills. Mm -hmm. He can have it if he wanted. <laughs> he could pay the mortgage. He could pay all. He could pay the light bill, the rent bill, his phone bill, his, his own insurance bill. He could pay my insurance bill. And I had a lead foot, so it was kind of high at that time. <laughs> but I think we're always like that. And Jesus, in his wisdom, reaches over and he grabs the child. Now, you've got to remember, these are all folks who are Jewish. And a Jewish child was not a full member of the synagogue until they were 12 to 13 years old. And especially for the men, they didn't actually, they started training about 13, and they weren't able to be their own teacher until they were about 30. That's why Jesus' ministry started at 30, because he was finally, in Jewish eyes, considered able to be his own rabbi. His, his training was done. So Jesus grabs a little one and says, Come here. You need to be like this little child. Imagine what Peter and them thought. You want us to be a little kid who can't fully participate in anything? And Jesus' eyes was saying, Yes. We need to have this attitude of a child. Now, think about children. I love watching Sarah and all other kids. They look at things with new eyes. They look at things like fresh and are excited. And they, I'm like, man, if I could go, I'm so cynical sarcastic and snide that I, that's hard for me to think of what that's like. Somebody calls the church and says I'm homeless. I'm like, mm -hmm. Because I'm, it's hard to be a child of God once you've seen the world. But we're to be like that. One of the things that we really need to do is humble ourselves. So the first thing we need to do to become a child of God is to be Realizing that I don't care how old you are, how much education you've got, you don't know all that God has planned. I met a guy this last week who reads Greek and Hebrew and, and, and he publishes Bibles. He goes all over, does all of these great things. But to hear him pray, it was like a little child asking for Abba Father. Not our Father. It wasn't eloquent. It, wasn't, it was just a child, and he's 90 some odd years old. Wow. And his prayer was just like, Daddy, help. Help me to fill your mission. He's 90 some odd years old, and he's still driving, going on mission work. Wow. To get Bibles to people. And, and I'm going to buy one of his Bibles, and I'm going to bring it, because it's a Bible to the Jewish people. And it takes all of the New Covenant, lines it up with the Old Covenant, right there together, and it, it's a cool Bible. But he's 94 and he's still reaching out to God like a dad because he's humble. He knows he doesn't know everything at 94 and been 
following Christ since he was 12. And that's it. So once we can get to that point where we get out of our own way and we, we, we quit relying on our own self and our own knowledge and our own doctrines and our own stuff and we rely fully on God, that's the start. The next thing we really have to do is actually get out of our own way. <laughs> Jesus says, don't be a stumbling block to any one of these little ones who believe in me. I really think he's talking about, what about all the lost, the people, the new people coming into Christ? We in our own way can be a stumbling block You ever hear Dad say, do it because I said so? Mm -hmm. We as Christians can say that to the new believers. This is the way you should do it. It's got to be like this. We say so. We're the adults. Um, don't, don't. <laughs> I always love this one. Do as I say, not as I do. God's telling us, Jesus here's telling us, don't do that. Don't put a stumbling block to people who are trying to find me. And children are trying to find their parents. Children are trying to find God. The world out there really is trying to find God. So let's not put a stumbling block in it. Let's not tell them that you have to do this before you do this. You have to read this translation. You have to do it this way. Let them come like little children. You ever seen a little child who hasn't seen their parent for a while? They run. And they, ah, and you know what's really cool about children? I don't care if that parent was a bad parent. They still want that love. But they run exuberantly, and they stumble, and they make mistakes because they want to please their parent. And they, 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 they won't tell you that if they're teenagers. They will not tell you that. But deep down, that's what happens. And that's what, and you can we, we adults can stop that cold. So don't be a stumbling block. Now Jesus does something here really interesting. He goes a little above and beyond. Um, I really don't think he was meant to actually cut him off our limbs. He's using a literary thing. Uh, he's using hyperboil, uh, hyperbole I guess you'd call it, to say, cut it off. Now, some people, if they took that literally, would maim themselves. But he's saying, go as so far as to look at yourself that if you are doing something that could cause a little child not to find me, stop doing that. Stop. And yes, if there's sin within the church, and I also think, you know, there's another, there's kind of a dual thing going on here, because, you know, in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, Paul uses the body as a metaphor for the church, arms and legs. And I think Jesus is saying, look, if, if the church of the day, if there's something that the church is doing that is blocking people from finding me, correct it, fix it, cut it off. Dig it out, get rid of it. Because you know what? You talk to a lot, a lot of religious people today. They're spiritual, but they're not religious. They've suffered religious abuse. They've had religion so, and not Christianity, but religion so shoved down their throat, they don't know what it is to be a true Christian. And that's a stumbling block. So let's cut that out. Let's get rid of the hypocrisy. Let's get rid of pastors who are in the pulpit who are fleecing the church for big money, who are at the same time telling you not to live a certain way or going behind your back and living that way. That get rid of those things. Now, the only way to get rid of the things as a body is to get rid of them out of our own lives. So be careful not to become a stumbling block by putting up rules and regulations to tell a child, a searcher, a seeker, that... That's not the way to go. He goes on in verse 10. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven, their angels continually see the face of my Father. In heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, 
and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go search for the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones Father in heaven, that one of these little ones should be lost. I look at that as saying, don't lose sight of the vision of God. Sometimes we get so caught up into what we think church should be. I, I, I spent four years learning about congregational leadership, spent a couple thousand dollars working on a doctrine about finding vision. Here's the vision of God. Oops. <laughs> Got a few more minutes. The vision of God is that we go out and search for the one that's lost. That's the vision. And that's what we all are supposed to be doing. You ever, you ever watch some friends? You ever watch some kids, teenagers together? What's the most important thing in their life? Their friends. If one of their friends is hurting, they go to them. I don't care what mom and dad say. They're going to hang out with their friends. They're going to be there for their friends. They go looking for them. We're to be the same thing. That's the vision of God. Is, you know what? We can fill these churches up. There are churches in, in this Christ City area that have thousands of people going to them every Sunday. We were amazed that we, when we came down here for a visit. I went to get a haircut at Sports Clips on a Sunday, thinking, hey, it's 9 o'clock, I'm going to go get a haircut. We weren't going to go to church, we were visiting, we were relaxing, and they were close to 1 o'clock. <laughs> Went around trying to find some another place. Nothing was open, because there were all of these churches. And they were, and a lot of places don't open for business, because they're still going to church, and the churches are full. Uh, I mean, they really are. There's big churches, there's little churches, there's thousands of people in the Tri-Cities area going to church. You know what else? We also have one of the highest air incidents of meth, drug addiction, mm -hmm. shooting. So what's going on? We've lost the vision. We've lost the vision. They're building big, big buildings. And a lot of people are driving to them. But they're not going out to find out there's people out there that you all know that won't talk to me. Because I don't know them. But you know them. And so let's come and meet them right where they're at. That's the idea of going out and finding that lost sheep. You're going to go find them exactly where they're at. In the briars and in the brambles and all of, and all of their mess. And that's the person that God rejoices over. The one lost sheep. That's how you become like a child of God. You take care of the people you you know, your non-Christian friends, the ones that are lost. And then, here's the best thing about a child. Last two things, I'll try to get to them pretty quickly. You know what children do? They restore each other. Verse 15. If, any of, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out that fault. When the two of you are alone, if the member listens to you and you've regained that one, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses, listen to even to the church. Let such ones be a Gentile or tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whoever, whoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth, be loose in heaven. And again, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. I know this is talking about church membership, but I want to look at how kids do it. You ever see two young men, brothers, man, probably brother brothers, you know, cut that finger, did things, and then the girls come. One likes a girl, and he got the pro code. If one guy likes him, you're not supposed to go out with her. Well, most time, 
You do. <laughs> and then what happens? Boys going to fight. The cool thing about young men, they beat the tar out of each other, and it's over. That's how children fight. They forgive. They kind of restore. Man, let's get into it. Let's fight. Let's have an argument. I don't know about girls so much, because there's a whole mean girl thing going on out there, but at least boys. <laughs> they fight, and they argue, and then they forgive each other. And the friendship goes on. And on. And, and guess what? Sometimes you, you may not actually need a fist fight, but you go talk to them. And if that don't work, you and your other buddies go and talk to them, especially if he's dating someone who's really not good for him. And you work it out. And sometimes we had to cut a few friends off in our life because maybe they were doing some really bad drugs. They're doing some really bad things. And it got to the point we couldn't stay with them. Well, I went off to the military one guy and I went off to prison. And I'm glad my parents had been strong enough to say, that's a guy you can't hang out with anymore. Now, he, he found his way back. We reconnected years later. Got himself straightened out. But there comes a time that we need the child, a little child is to have those discussions with our friends and those that we love and then we have to find a way to restore that relationship just the way kids do. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. My daughter's got friends she's had since she was like 10. She's 42. And they fight and there are times that they're separate and then they come back together and it's all good. See, that's what a childlike is. You have that loving relationship that even when you fight, even when you disagree, there's love and there's hope until such time that you know, sometimes you have to say, I'm done for right now because that's not healthy. But when they get restored, you forgive them. 21 says, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if any... Number of the church sins against me. How often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said, no. Nah. Not seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, one translation says 77 times basically mean all the time. If someone comes to you and truly confess, you are to forgive them. Now, it has to be true confession. They can't go, yeah, man, I'm sorry, dude. I got caught. Really, God knows the heart. You know your friend's heart. Imagine this. If we became like children of God, and we went out there and we loved, and we didn't put all of these rules in, and we didn't lose sight that those folks, those ones that are, you know, got the weird hair, and got the nose ring right there, and the lip rings right there, and rings in other places and live lifestyles that I don't understand those are the laws that Jesus loves John 3.16 says for God so loved the world John 3.16 in the home of Christian standard says for God so loved the world in this way that he sent his only son his only begotten son so if we love like Jesus we need to be out of the world and bringing our friends into the kingdom of God. The only way to do that is to be like a child. Humble, loving, holy, trusting that God is in control. We don't have to tell people their sins. We don't have to tell people that their lifestyle may not be what the Bible says. We just got to show them Jesus. We'll let him clean them. He's the father. He's, he's the one that is taking care of everything. So let's let him do his job and let us do our job. Uh -huh. Let's be like children. And I'll let what God wants to tell people to clean up, let him, let him clean them up. It's not my role. I just want to love Jesus. And I want people to see that. Let's 
be children of God this week and see how God moves. Let's don't let them stop. Let's don't be a stumbling block. Don't forget we're out there to find the lost sheep. And when they ask us to forgive, let us forgive. No strings attached. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, I want to thank you. Because true greatness, true spiritual greatness comes when we get out of our own way and let you be God. When we become like children, trusting you in all things. Trusting you for our friends, trusting you for the people around us, trusting our salvation to you and you alone. Then we will see people come, excited to see you, excited to meet you, excited to learn about you. And Lord, into your hands we place them. And Lord, into your hands I place myself that I will be truly a child of God. And that each person here too would, would, would do, would become a child of God this week. In Christ's name.